Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Entertainment Podcast, your source for all things entertainment. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have on the line Charles Suri from the Jazz Quartet, Charles Suri and Friends. Uh, Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Adam. Love being here. So I'm excited to get into today's t- uh, topic, how to manage uh, a-, a business as a freelance musician. So excited to get into that. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit more about what you're doing uh, with your jazz quartet. So first, tell us a little bit more about Charles Suri and Friends. Well, thank you so much. So I started it as a trio two years ago. Uh, I've been playing since I was five, but I just recently fell in love with jazz. Started my trio in 2018 after going to New Orleans, and I listened to the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. And I've been a composer ever since I was a kid, but I said, I want to do this. And um, I've been improvising since I was a child, and composing a lot of music, so I said this is time to bring out commercially recorded music and do my own stuff. And I also wanted to make the world a little bit of a brighter place because I didn't like where things were going. People were feeling depressed, lonely, isolated, and I said, let's see if there's a way we can cheer uh, people up. So I started composing for the band, which includes myself on the on the keyboard. Uh, a double bass player, Jay Brunka, and uh, Jay O'Brien, who plays the drums. We came out with our first album called Lollipops for Breakfast that was inspired by the request of my six-year-old daughter. <laughs> and, it needed, and it's funny because that title song has everyone toe tap, and it's a real, uh, it's for the kid and all of us. And... Uh, it was rated as a first-rate jazz tune by All About Jazz, and it won a Global Music Award right the same year that it was released. So people loved it. And most recently, I grew the trio into a quartet, which I called Charu Suri and Friends, and sort of broke new ground by combining a trio with an Indian Sufi singer. Mm. Uh, we premiered that album in Carnegie Hall, and I sort of made history by being the first Indian American jazz composer to premiere original work over an entire evening at Carnegie Hall in December. So we got a standing ovation. It was pretty wow. surreal. It was an amazing, amazing night. Um, but that's the evolution of my trio into a quartet, and now we're performing every everywhere. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. I love this. And uh and, and congratulations. What an amazing accomplishment to be able to do that at Carnegie Hall. I mean that that's the pinnacle. Um, love it. Um so that being said, uh Lolly let's start off with this. So Lolly Pops for Breakfast. Where can people find the music? Where can they I know there's people listening right now that are really inspired, They're like, Oh my gosh, where do I find this? You can find it on iTunes and Spotify under my name, under Charu Suri. All the albums are there including Lollipops, which is on my top five most downloaded tracks. And, oh, that's uh, amazing. It's, yep. So let's, uh, let's switch it up a bit. So you, um, I mean, obviously you, you started, you, you went down this path, and now you're having success, and now you have to think about the money and working. And, and as, a, as a musician, I know there's a lot of musicians out there, a lot of creatives out there, and, and being freelance, I mean, there's a business side to it to be able to stay in the game and to be able to manage things right. Um, what are some of the, obviously, you know, hindsight being 2020? What are some, and, and as business owners, I don't care if it's freelance musician, I don't care if you're starting up at a tech company, I don't care what it is. Like, we all learn from the ups and the downs and the sideways in between. Like, nothing ever works out exactly perfect. What are some of the tips or some of the things that you've learned since you've been on this path? I've learned it really is about pitching yourself and marketing yourself. Uh, I had an agent um, when I first started out, but, you know, honestly, because I'm very self-motivated and I think Mm -hmm. in this business you have to be a hustler no matter how good you are. It -hmm. doesn't matter whether you've won Grammys or not won Grammys, you've got to hustle. So you've got to email and send reminders and show up at jazz clubs uh, and have your postcards ready, have your material ready, 
never ever take anything for granted. Have your CDs at all your shows. Really promote everything on social so people understand where you are and which next show you're doing. All of that will build up the volume and the momentum that is needed to give you the gigs. I mean, it's not as simple as just composing and letting your work sit there, hoping you're going to get followers, because it really, that's not the way the model works anymore. You really, really have to do a lot of legwork and behind-the-scenes work. I love it. Let's talk just a little bit more about the about the promotion side and what you find you found kind of helpful for you to continue your message going. Because I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, you know, you you got to keep staying in front of your audience. But how do you feel you've been able to connect with your audience and kind of to build your 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 group, so to speak? Really, honestly, by putting out you know, great work. We debuted both the Book of Ragas and the New American Songbook at Carnegie Hall in December. And so we have two singers. One, uh, Danny Rhodes, who is an amazing songbook singer, sang all original songbook pieces I composed. And we just took that show on the road in Miami over Valentine's Day. And the house was just packed. We had wow. hundreds of people just, just came to listen to our songbook stuff. Um, but honestly, it's been you are we are in the music business it, the mm-hmm. focus has to be on putting out amazing work and original work and 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 sort of really hitting beyond the boundaries of what is possible in your particular field and genre i think that's that's a given i don't think that's a negotiable that's a non-negotiable that's that that's how we built up our followers by not only putting albums out but by releasing singles um by by doing whatever and whichever gigs came our way, regardless of the pay initially, um, I think because people didn't know us, and why would you? Because you haven't heard of us. Uh, we had to work harder uh, in the beginning to get in front of audiences and to prove ourselves. Um, and of course, now that they've heard us, now we're rebooked again and again, and people, you know, are calling us back, and which is great. But I think initially, the initial hardship, I think, is is really about establishing an original sound, Mm -hmm. owning your sound completely and totally. Uh, I did not want to copy a sound out there, so I really wanted to create my own sound with the Sufi Raga jazz that that I put out, but also pay a tribute to some of the, the more standard type of songbook jazz with the with the new American songbook. So but it's really about carving your identity, owning it, and then uh doing two thousand percent to make sure that every gig and every concert is flawless, beautifully executed, that everyone who comes there wants to come back again. Oh, I love it. I mean it's amazing. It's an amazing story. It's amazing. I'm excited to follow your career and to see you you do more great things. Um so that being said, what um what do you have coming up? I mean give us give us some of the uh some of the insights on what what your twenty twenty is looking like. So I'm planning a big India tour, so we're working on that because the Book of Ragas is definitely stems from my Indian upbringing. So I want to take the show on the road to India. So I'm talking with a bunch of venues there to take the band on the road. We have another gig at Carnegie Hall this year. We're very excited. We're uh, we're back there uh, on November 28th. We'll be re- debuting new um, new albums and new new work on the songbook and the Raga Jazz front. We just came back from Miami. We had a big tour there over Valentine's Day. We're going to be in Chicago at the end of March, and we've applied to a lot of festivals. And we're playing. We're one of the main bands at. Greenville's Artist Year Festival on May 10th. We're going to be on the main stage. So a lot of great gigs, a lot of great festivals, and we're very excited. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. That's great. Um, and you're, you're going to be there on my birthday. Come on. Um, so that oh, being said, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, uh, if somebody's listening to this and they want to catch your tour dates, um, what, what, where do they find it? Where do they find all your info? At my on my website on charusuri dot com, but also on Spotify. Spotify has all the calendar and concert dates at the very end. If you scroll down, um, not just me, but for a lot of artists, you can catch 
uh, the performances on Spotify. So we'll post everything there. I didn't there. even know and that. That's awesome. I had no idea. I used yeah. Spotify, and I didn't even know they had the dates on there. That's great. They do. They do, yes. That's awesome. And so where can people follow you on social media? So you can follow us on Instagram at Charu Suri Music, and that's the same handle for Twitter, and on Facebook at Charu Suri Trio. Fantastic. Well, hey, Charu, it's been awesome having you on the show today, and uh, share more about your background, your business, and also all the great work you're doing in touring. I mean, amazing work. I, I'm excited to continue to follow your career, and also to check out uh, Lollipops for Breakfast. Got to check them all out. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you had fun listening. We had fun making it for you. If you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. If you're watching this on our, our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Entertainment, give us a subscribe there, but uh, also leave us some comments in the comment section. I mean, love to hear your, your thoughts on everything and to hear what's going on with you. Let's not let the conversation end here. Let's pick it up in the YouTube community. Uh, and, uh, Charlotte, thanks again for coming on the show.